Hello everyone, my name is Liam Sorter, I'm a developer evangelist here at Amazon, and in this short video we're going to be covering the process behind creating a catalog to be used for catalog ingestion. If this is your first time hearing of catalog ingestion, check out the video on screen now for our video walking through how CI works and what the integration process looks like. Now as you can probably guess, catalogs contain all of the content that you want to offer within your Fire TV app. These catalogs come in the form of a CDF file or catalog data format schema, which is essentially a big XML file that includes both the content as well as any additional elements that you want to include. Now, depending on the type of content you're going to be sharing, you may want to format your CDF differently, such as showing a series with multiple episodes versus a list of movies. To make things as easy as possible, we've created a bunch of example catalogs ranging from TV specials to movies, all fully documented and even integrating features such as limited time viewing and gated content. I'm using Sublime Text here, though you can use just about any editor that you want, though if you're going to be editing larger files, you may want to use one that has dedicated XML navigation. In order to get the most out of your catalogs, you're going to want to fully understand the schema and how different elements operate. The whole schema itself is defined inside this catalog.xsd file. You can download it on the link on screen now if you prefer to have a local copy. This file outlines all of the elements and their associations that are used within CDF files. If this is your first time working with XSD files, we've included a few links on screen now that you can check out for extra reading material on covering the basics, the structure, and even data types. Alternatively, you can use our online documentation page covering every element in the schema along with all of the necessary property information such as dependencies and any children elements. You can also filter the elements based just on the media that you're working with. We'll also get a handy hierarchy of all relevant elements. We can then click on any of these to get more information about that specific element. Now, as you can see, there is an enormous amount of metadata available to us to use within our CDF. Don't worry, you'll be happy to know that not all of these fields are required, but you can take a look at our documentation page on screen now for a full list of all the available fields depending on the type of content you're going to be ingesting. Now, one of the most useful features within the CFD is the ability to introduce either free or subscription offers by simply including one of these tags around your content. You can also time gate these offers by using the start and end windows for each individual promotion, giving you the option to potentially onboard a free user and then transition into a subscription model. Now, one of the most vital pieces of information you'll need to include are your content deep links. You have a few options when it comes to how exactly you format this in order to best fit your native apps functionality. For example, your information will be fetched differently when using the unique ID of your content versus an actual URI deep link. We suggest using launch ID as your tag, as it will be the tag you use to fetch the deep link from your native application. And now if we put all of this together, we can see an example of a free offer with a time limited window and a URI deep link for the content itself. One thing you can do to smooth out that initial first step of validation is to validate the CDF yourself. There are a few ways you can go about doing this as most modern IDEs will include some form of XML validation, but a few examples are Eclipse, IntelliJ, Visual Studio, and Notepad++. Now, since CDFs need to be refreshed and uploaded regularly, you want to create your own generator sooner rather than later, especially if you have a large library of content. This section is going to be entirely based on how you currently store and catalog your own content, though here are a few things to ask yourself when planning out the architecture of your generator. The first is how you want to handle the gating and offer windows. How you determine what current and future content is going to be eligible for viewing. How the time window is going to be set. And what is the granularity for any restrictions. You'll also want to consider how you'll map existing metadata to the CDF zone elements. And whether you think that there's any important metadata that's missing. And finally, how are you handling multiple regions? And are you going to have any offers that are region specific? 
And that's catalogs covered. I've included a link on screen now to our full docs page on creating CDFs, which even features an alternative element view using auto-generated docs. If you're currently building for Fire TV or have any questions, feel free to get in touch with us at firetvdev-eu at amazon.com. Thanks for watching.